Hi, and welcome to City A Go-Go, coming to you this month from Cadence Winery, located in Soto. Now, the grapes are grown in eastern Washington, but the wine is made right here. And here are the winemakers, Gay and Ben. Say hi. Hello. Hi. We've got a really great show, so let's get going. First up, the streets of Seattle, as seen through the eyes of artist Gretchen Batchelor. I love the structure of the city. I love buildings and the shadows, how they play on the buildings. Seattle has this really great quality of light in that it's very blue. My favorite colors together are blue and orange, and typically the pieces that I choose to paint are evening scenes because of the orange light that usually comes into the city. It's very yellow, it's very warm. I feel like the, the response that people have to my paintings is emotional in that a lot of them have some sort of connection with the scenes that I've painted. It gives more meaning to the paintings for me. They become something more than structure. Um, they become a, a place where, where people have met and enjoyed one another and experienced the city. Next, it's a monthly grab bag of fun at On The Boards. Tominus Max is a showcase for local and Northwest artists to preview their work. I remember when he gave this to me. He loves green on me. 12 Minutes Max is very particular because we're just looking at a piece of work. We're not as interested in the history of the artist. We're putting together an interesting evening of work. There can be multimedia, they can have sculptures part of their dance performance, they can have movement part of their theater piece. Don't worry too much, it'll happen to you. The one thing with uh, 12 Minutes Max audience is they're very particular. They know that they will see something fresh and new and look out for those particular artists. And at the same time, if they're not quite their taste, then they know they only have to sit through a maximum of 12 minutes. It's the only one that will show a mixture of artists. It's not just dance, it's not just theater, it's not just music, it's all over the place. And now for the details. Gretchen Bachelor's newest body of work can be seen now through December 30th at Cafe Ladro on the top of Queen Anne Hill. For hours and directions, call 282-5313. Catch the next round of 12 Minutes Max, January 23rd and 24th at On The Boards. For more information, go to ontheboards.org. Spain in the Age of Exploration, running now through January 2nd at the Seattle Art Museum, is a must-see. This beautiful exhibit covers 200 years and features works from Hieronymus Bosch to Goya. More information is at seattleartmuseum.org. Where can you boo at Nazis, hiss at the Baroness, cheer for Maria, and wave your Edelweiss? At the 4th Annual Sound of Music Sing-Along, of course, this non-stop film fun takes place Sunday, January 2nd at the 5th Avenue Theater. Find out more at 292 Arts. And finally, he's back. That's right. Phantom of the Opera, Andrew Lloyd Webber's monster stage musical, hits the silver screen on December 22nd. Check your local listings for times. Miss something? Not to worry. Go to seattlechannel.org. Well, that's it for this month. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, we encourage you to get out there, try something delicious and new, and experience the awesome power of art. Happy holidays.
but it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that having started to teach at NYU uh, and to stand in front of young, you know, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, ambitious, hungry, disciplined students makes me really, really love and admire the profession and the pursuit of it. I think it's noble, and I think that it's, you know, well, it's not sounding silly now, but I do think it's really, really a wonderful way to spend your time and to spend your life. And any time you've been to a movie or, or to a play, that has just been caught up even for five minutes in some other world and, uh, and thought about your own life in relation to it, it's just so wonderful. I mean, I just don't know why really you would do anything else. It's so, for me, it's very fulfilling. It's just looking for work that's a pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, well, so, that's, no, that's nice. That's great. You know, it's, it, it, I think everybody has the calling for it. I think everybody, at least in my experience as a teacher, I mean, I've taught people who are lawyers and professional people who are just interested in pursuing it and are in a midlife change and I think everybody, every human being has an ability to exist creatively. It's just trying to give yourself the respect and space to allow yourself to do it and it's a funny time where we desperately want it and need it but we're so terrified to put ourselves out on the line. It's like doing karaoke I've never done karaoke before. We were at uh, David Arquette's house and we were doing karaoke. And I thought to myself, I think I'm going to die. I feel like I just <laughs> want to absolutely die because I'm standing in front of people, myself, being me, singing a song, which I think is, was extraordinary and horrifying. And I think that what, you know, the journey that a person has to go through to just say, well, here I am, folks, you know, this is, there's, here's the experience. I, I, think it, it, I, I think it's wonderful when you can just allow yourself to do it. Uh, it it's certainly very, very meaningful to me when I see a student of mine uh, do it. And uh, your life is never the same. You feel pretty good about yourself when you can put yourself out there. Sorry, that was rambling. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that is really great. Yeah. Um, well, let's make it very simple. Why do you do what you do? Why, why have you pursued the lines of an artist? Um. I have pursued the life of an artist I would say in very banal terms because I can't live without doing it. I want to tell stories. I want to express myself as any of us, any one of us does. Um, and I've been lucky enough to make my whole life about doing that. Uh, artistic expression for me has become what I live and breathe every day. Because when I'm not acting in a, in, in a film or in a play, uh, or I'm not directing one, I can always be writing one. Uh, and when I'm not doing that, I'm reading something and imagining that world, which is another form of creation. When I read a novel, I do so in as, an imaginative, as, in as imaginative a way as I can Many of us do this. I don't think I'm unique in this regard. But I visualize everything, and I play the characters in my head. Uh, I live and breathe that. Um, in another way of answering your question, I, I guess I'd refer to this wonderful speech that I heard from Doug Hughes, uh, who used to be affiliated with Seattle Repertory Theater. Uh, who was asked to deliver a speech about acting in the 21st century. And he gave this speech just after 9-11. Uh, and in the New York Times, uh, still today, um, they have this 
single page every day uh, with bios of people who perished. And there are about uh, between 15 and 20 per day. And Doug talked about these people as genetic accidents, as we all are, because in all these bios, the peculiarities of each individual were explored. And I think that our work as artists in any medium, even abstract painting, is addressing the illumination of our human peculiarities, whether they're emotional or concrete and tangible, whether they're abstract or not. And devoting my life to exploring that is as useful uh, um, uh, a, uh, uh, an, an experience as I can imagine for my time on this earth. <laughs> um, if you're interested in this, but I bet I could get Fisher Stevens to do an interview with you. Would you want that, or is this enough? Oh, it's not. Um.